In this video then we're going to look at uh, how uh, substances like uh, sucrose and amino acids uh, move through the flow and vessel. Uh, the movement is called translocation and uh, the hypothesis that tries to explain how the movement occurs is called the mass flow hypothesis. So we need to know uh, what that is. We need to know the definition of the mass flow hypothesis. Uh, and then right at the end, we'll, we'll look at, uh, you know, what is wrong with this mass flow hypothesis, because it doesn't really fit totally with the current experimental evidence of um, how substances move through the flow. Uh, that will be a, a topic for the next video, where we go into details about the... Uh, uh, current evidence of um, flow and translocation. So for this video we're just going to look at um, the mass flow hypothesis and, and what is uh, or what used to be thought occurred in the movement of sugars. So uh, what we use uh, to sort of represent the mass flow hypothesis uh, is this diagram here so I'll label number one. Uh, it's a very um, basic image there of um, the components that make up or that are needed for the mass flow hypothesis to occur. So um, in terms of a definition, um, the mass flow hypothesis states that sugars and amino acids are transported or translocated from a source to a sink down a pressure gradient uh, by mass flow and the movement is in one direction only so there's the red arrows there showing the direction of the flow uh, translocation uh, so, how does this work? Well, at the source, um, you should be able to name the source, which uh, is the leaf, and specifically, it's the palisade mesophyll cells in the leaf. They're the ones that will do photosynthesis uh, and make the, the sucrose. So, in the source, uh, photosynthesis is happening, sugars are made, and within the cells then, which is what uh, A represents, uh, you get a increase in the solute potential because sugars are being made. All right. That will obviously lead to a reduction in the water potential of the cells. And when that happens, you will get the osmotic movement in of water uh, from the xylem vessel here. Okay. Now, when water enters those cells, they'll become a uh, turgid, and you'll get a high pressure potential. So you get a high pressure generated in the uh, cells of the source, um, and it's that pressure that's going to push the phloem liquid out through the phloem and down into the sink. Now, we do need a pressure gradient, so if we've got a high pressure in the source, we've got to have a low pressure in the sink. So examples of sinks uh, will be the roots. Uh, that's where sugars will be stored as starch. Um, you could have uh, the fruit. Okay, that's where sugars are stored there in the fruit. Um, you could have the growing parts of the plant, often called the uh, apical uh, meristem. Now, that would be a, a sink because the sugars will be used up in those growing regions um, by, uh, by being a substrate for uh, aerobic respiration. So there's three, root, uh, three um, sinks that uh, are very common in a plant. 
So what happens in the cells of the sink then is the solute potential is going to go down because the sugars are either used up or they are stored in a insoluble form like starch. That means the water potential of the cells in the sink will go up and that will cause water to leave the cells of the sink and enter the xylem vessel. So as the water leaves by osmosis, you actually get a reduction in the pressure potential of the sink cells. So there's your pressure gradient and how it's formed. It's high in the source, low in the sink. And uh, that will allow um, translocation to occur through the flow um, by mass flow. So you get this sort of bulk transport of sugars going through the flow and vessel uh, from a high pressure uh, to a low pressure. And that must happen in one direction. So translocation will occur from the source to the sink in one direction only. So that's what this image uh, is, is showing. Now, the image on the right, number two, uh, is a more sort of biological image, I suppose, or drawing uh, to show the mass flow hypothesis. So you've got the, um, the source cell there in the leaf. Um, water and the sucrose will enter the flow and vessel. That will generate a high pressure at point one. So that will be high uh, pressure. The substances then will move down uh, to the sink, down the pressure gradient. So you'll get a low pressure then uh, in the sink. And uh, water will move out because there's a low pressure and the uh, sugars are stored as starch. So the water will move out. And uh, because you've got the sucrose at the top, the water will enter there. So that's a more biological uh, view of it. And uh, this image is actually a little bit more accurate to the one on the, the left. Uh, so this image here um, is bordering on how uh, mass flow actually works because there is a slight difference in this image uh, compared to the number one image okay uh, but we'll come to that uh, in the next video but that's basically what mass flow is or the mass flow hypothesis is and uh, there are several things that are wrong with this hypothesis things that uh, do not fit with the current uh, understanding of translocation. So this is a list of the problems with the mass flow hypothesis as I've uh, outlined it. Um, number one, there's no role of the companion cell in that current mass flow hypothesis. There's no function of the sieve plate all right, now you've got these sieve plates in the flow and vessel and um, they, they look like they're sort of obscuring the movement of uh, the flow um, liquid. So there must be some sort of function for them. Um, the bidirectional movement is seen in the flow um. uh, Now the mass flow hypothesis does not state that bidirectional movement occurs. Um, we know there is a need for ATP, but in the mass flow hypothesis, it's actually a passive process, so it doesn't need ATP. Uh, number five, uh, this is what I was mentioning earlier about the diagram two. Um, with the mass flow hypothesis, if I go back... Uh, with diagram number one, the pressure is said to uh, get generated within the cells of the source. But 
in reality, what we now know is the pressure itself is created in the flow and vessel. And that's what this diagram too is, is on the cusp of sort of showing. All right. So uh, we'll come to how the pressure is created in the flow and in the, uh, in the next video. Right, and uh, the last one there, translocation occurs at different velocities. All right, but the mass flow hypothesis, uh, because you've got this pressure gradient created, uh, movement is of a uniform velocity. Uh, but that's not what uh, is known about the flow. -in. So that's the mass flow hypothesis. In the next video, we'll address these six points and we'll look at the experimental evidence um, that back up these six points.